evaluated by our three evaluators, and the title of the speech is Spray Drip. It's five to seven minutes long. Please welcome our speaker for Spray Drip, Chuck Blessing. Chuck Blessing. Madam Contest Master and fellow Toastmasters and special guest, Spray Drift caused me a problem last year. I lost all of my grapes in the vineyard that I had set aside as a test plot that would be my very first grapes of our commercial venture for growing grapes. Spray Drift. We all know what Roundup is. There's about 40 similar chemicals that can absolutely devastate vineyards and organic gardens and organic farms. This is not good. Have you read the directions on the cans and the boxes, the containers of these special types of herbicides and pesticides and algicides and all of those funny sides that you can just put on things to keep the pests away and keep the fungus from growing and so forth. But the state of North Carolina has a very special group that actually regulates this. And they issue fines for people who have been properly trained for administering these special types of herbicides. They issue fines for people who are using the wrong types of sprays on certain types of areas. If you have something growing nice and green right here and you spray it with Roundup, within a few days it's going to just start turning brown and shrivel up and it'll die. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what the label says. It's what it's supposed to do. Okay. But if he has a little plot of organic veggies over here and he has a little plot of grapes next to it, usually there's no impact unless there's just a little bit of wind. And when you're trying so hard with all of your hazmat equipment and suits and all this masks, and you're spraying, and there's no wind, and you're spraying, just a little puff of that wind will cause that spray to drift and damage his organic veggies and damage his organic grapes. What the chemical companies don't tell you, and you don't find on the directions, on the containers of these dangerous chemicals, is there's something called spray drift. And it's not just the adjacent area. Spray drift has been measured by our counterparts out in Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, where I've been staying in touch with the commercial growers out there. For the last 15 years, they have actually measured spray drift going up to five miles from the place that it was originally intended. Five miles. Three miles is very typical. Three miles. And that's if you have a very, very low wind. So, if I'm spraying my Roundup right here, and there's a little bit of wind, I have to look three to five miles away for potential damage. And of course, the other thing that they don't tell you, it's not on the directions, not on the boxes, not on the websites, there's something called secondary drift. Works like this. I come out one day and spray my weeds with an herbicide. A couple days later, they start all wilting away and going back. Done with that job. About a week or two weeks from now, the temperature kicks up about 8 to 15 degrees. It's now 92 degrees. And all of that chemical that's in the soil and it's in those dead leaves starts to vaporize back into the atmosphere. And it drifts over to his veggie patch and over to his organic grapes and does just as much damage 
as the very first primary drift would do. I don't know about you, but I don't like eating vegetables and fruits, any kind of foods that have residual pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides on it. Just don't like that. But in the grape industry, the viticulture industry that I'm involved with, with our commercial vineyard, we're very, very sensitive to these herbicides because during the bloom period, it's very, very critical. There's about a week to 10 day period when the grapes are actually blooming. You need a microscope to actually see the size of the blooms, but that's a very critical time. And last year, we happened to have got hit with some spray drift primary from a mile away. I was behind the truck that was spraying the sides of the road. Every one of the blossoms on my grapevines fell off. I got zero grapes last year, zero. And that was supposed to be our first year of getting some grapes. The problem with it is there's no laws or regulations right now that tells you when the county is going to be spraying or the state is going to be spraying along the ditches, along the wayside. And of course, the power companies and utilities and so forth, they have the right-of-way spraying. And of course, there's the railroads. They come along at 3 o'clock in the morning with these big tanker cars just spraying everything on the sides to kill all the grass and all the weeds between the tracks and along the edge of the tracks. Oh, yes. It's all around us. But some states have figured out how to deal with it. So what I suggest very strongly doing is getting in touch with your local utility companies. If you know somebody at the railroad, people who are doing work for the counties and so forth, and let them know that these types of occurrences of damage to your organic crops, including grapes, which is important to us, it's not only the primary drift, and they take great care to make sure that they spray on a windless day or in the middle of the night when you can't see them spraying, as the railroad does. Mm -hmm. And it's the secondary drift that causes just as much damage. There's a list of about 40 chemicals that we know that causes the problem. It's up to you. Give us a hand. Let's drop the primary and secondary spray drift damage. Madam Contest Master.